Hi everyone, just a quick video to talk everyone through the statistical functions on the calculator for those who missed it in class today or who need a refresher. So firstly we're going to go over here to statistics and this is what's going to pop up. Um, when it pops up you might have some data in there from work that you've done before. So the first thing we're going to do is go edit and clear all. And that's what we're going to do every time we want to start afresh. First of all, just to go through a few of the functions of how this actually works. So let's say I put some data, uh, first of all, up here, actually, on the top right corner, I can choose how many columns I want. So you'll see at the moment there's a little four there. So if I click on that, it'll give me a fourth column. Now there's a two there, so I can get two columns, three or three columns. So I can change that depending on what I need. Secondly, let's put some numbers in there. To put numbers in, I'm going to type the number I want and then hit execute. So let's say I've got a 6 and a 2 and a 5 and a 4. Um, now, a couple of things. Let's say that I wanted this 5 to actually be a 9. Easy, I just go up to it and when the uh, when I get to the 5, I just click a 9 instead, execute, and it swaps that number for me. Let's say I want to, in between the 2 and the 9, I realize I actually wanted a 4 in between that 2 and the 9. So what I'm going to do, do is I'm going to go up to the number below. So if I, if I want it in between the 2 and the 9, I'll go to the 9. Then I'll go up the top here to edit, and I will insert a cell. That will give me a new cell between the 2 and the 9, where I can type my... Uh, if I want to delete a cell, I've written something in that I don't actually want to be there, um, then instead of just clicking backspace, which isn't actually going to solve anything, I want to totally delete the cell, and therefore I want to use this clear button over here. So if I want to get rid of this for now, I'll go down there and click clear, and that will get rid of it for me. Okay, let's talk about how we can actually use this to answer questions for us. So. Let's say that these scores here that I'm putting in, 6, 2, 9, 4, I'll give it a 5, and a 3, and an 8, and maybe another 3, another couple of 3s. There we go. So I've got 8 scores there. These uh, numbers could be anything you like. Let's say we want to know uh, how many kilometers away from the school everyone in the class lives, and these are all the answers. Now, uh, to get the useful information, I'm going to go up the top here and click Calc. Now in this course, in Year 11, like I said at the beginning, we're only ever dealing with univariate data. So this one variable at the top is the only one that we're ever going to use in Year 11. So I'm going to click one variable, X list. So if you remember our notation, X is uh, what I call each score is another X value. So I want to make sure that my X list uh, what it says over here is the list that I have written all my scores in. So if we just have a look, I've written all my scores in list 1. Let's jump back into that now. So X list is list 1. Frequency, uh, we only really need to worry about this if we're using a frequency table rather than just a list of all the scores. And at the moment it's just a list of all the scores. So we're going to make sure we leave frequency with just a 1. Once I've made sure that's all good, I'm going to click OK, and this is going to give me all of the information that I am interested in. So a couple of key highlights, like the notation we've always been using, X with a bar on top means the mean, so I have a mean score of 4.875. This one here, the Greek lowercase letter sigma, is the standard deviation. So I've got a standard deviation of 2.421. This one here, um, as I mentioned in class, is something that we don't really need to worry about, but just so that you're aware, it's like a different type of standard deviation that's just a little bit higher um, that we don't really need to worry about unless you um, are doing population statistics. But for this course, we don't really need to worry about that one. If we scroll down, um, we might see some other useful things. It gives us the minimum score the median, the maximum score, and these two are the... In if we continue, we get the mode. And so all of the useful information uh, that we could possibly want is in that table. Okay, let's quickly talk about, let's say instead of just a list of all the scores, 
um, I had a frequency table. So this is like the example that we did in class on Wednesday uh, with the number of siblings that everyone has. So let's say we could have zero siblings, one sibling, two siblings, three siblings, four siblings, or five siblings. Now I know there were more, but just to demonstrate, we'll leave it at those. Now let's say there was one person with zero, three people with one, six people with two siblings, seven people with three siblings, four people with four siblings, and one person with five siblings, let's just say. So what I've got here is in list one, I have all my scores, and in list two, I have all my frequencies. So now I'm gonna do the exact same thing as before, calc. I'm still only using one variable. My variable is how many siblings everyone has. So I'll click one variable. The difference here is that I now, because I have a frequency table, need to worry about this thing over here. So I'm gonna go into this drop-down menu and I'm gonna let my calculator know that I've written my frequencies in my second column, in the list two column. That's all I need to do, click OK. And again, it gives me all the useful information I could want. So the mean is 2.591, the standard deviation is 1.193, the median is three, the mode is three, etc. It is all in there. Let me know if you have any questions or if there's anything that uh, any of the practice questions ask you to do that I have not properly explained there. Just to finish off with, we'll go edit, clear all. Cool, there you have it.